What's good, Washington fans? Um, so there will be a lot of teams picking up guys off of the waiver wire. Um, just wanted to get into a little note so you guys know the scheduling for today. Uh, this is from Greg Allman on Twitter. He says, uh, NFL transactions are a little different today. Waiver claims on all players waived Tuesday are due by noon, and teams should find out who got which players by one. Practice squads can then be stocked, and another release today will share who was cut to make room for waiver ads. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's going to be some more moves around the league today and transactions, so just stay tuned for that. We'll see if some guys clear waivers. Um, AGG, I doubt he clears waivers. I think he's going to get picked up. Jimmy Moreland, same with him. Peyton Barber possibly could clear waivers. Do I really want him back on the roster? On a practice squad, sure, why not? Um, Jeremy Reeves, that's a guy that we're hoping, or that I'm hoping clears waivers, and we can stash him on a practice squad and use him for safety depth like we did towards the end of the year. So, so those are some of the guys that I'm hoping that um, could possibly come back to the Washington football team. But let's get to what's really going on in the video today. So that's, what's, that's what you got to keep up with. So we're going to pick up some guys off the waiver wire. Um, that's what it is. That's the timing on everything. Now, this is a report from Tony Pauline off Pro Football Network. He says that the Jets and Washington football team are currently showing the most interest in linebacker Bernardrick McKinney. He was recently released by the Dolphins after being acquired in an offseason trade. So um, if you look at the roster of the 53 man, Ron only kept four linebackers. Uh, he cut David Mayo and Jared Norris, which was a surprise to me. I thought he was going to at least keep David Mayo, um, which I know he really liked. And we kept, of course, Jamin, Cole, Bostic, and Khalid Hudson. So we clearly need another linebacker. Linebacker is probably our one of our weaker positions, on uh, probably the weakest position on defense. Um, we need help. And it showed in the preseason games. The depth was just not there. We got cut up. We got ran on. The Ramondre Stevenson 91-yard touchdown run in the Bengals game. They were able to run the football, too. The Ravens game, they were able to run the football as well. All three preseason games, they were able to move the football on our defense at the linebacker spot. Jamin Davis, he looked better in the second game, but he, you could tell that he still has a learning curve, which every rookie does. He's going to have to get used to the speed of the game and processing things right here. So, Bernard McKinney, let's get into what he could bring to the roster. Um, he's a great run stopper, really good at stopping the run. He's a heck of a tackler, was a pro bowler in 2018. Uh, six foot four, 257 pounds. So he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Played in a three, four defense with the, with the uh, Houston Texans. Then got traded to the Miami Dolphins over the summer back in March or not over the summer, but back in March, he got traded to the Dolphins and then they released him uh, yesterday. Um, so he is on the market. So he's a guy that we can just sign. We don't have to wait. And he wasn't waived. He was, he was just released because he's older. He's 28 years old. So he's still fairly young. KJ Wright's 32. This guy, Bernard McKinney is 28. So on the trajectory, he's still younger, was a former second round pick out of Mississippi State in the 2015 NFL draft. So you look at his durability. Last year, he had a season ending shoulder injury. So he only played four games, didn't have a great season with the Texans. Um, every year, every year since 2015, when he came in the league, except for 2020, he's played 14 out of 16 games. So the durability is there. Um, he's just a tackling machine. The guy had a uh, hundred tackles in three seasons and almost had a hundred tackles in 2017. So the pro bowl year, he had, he had 105 tackles. And then the year after that in 2019, he had 101 tackles. 2016 has, he had 129 tackles and five sacks. The guy is a tackling machine and he can come off the blitz and edge and, and, and off the edge and blitz a little bit. So we can use him in some blitz packages as well. Um, he's more of an old school linebacker. He's a guy that just stops the run not the fastest guy in the world, but when he came out of college, he did run a 4 6 40. So that's, that's pretty darn good. 6 4. Um, and a 40 inch vert as well, coming out of college as well. So um, the guy can really stop the run. That's what he can do. He's not really good in coverage. You look at some of his numbers on Pro Football uh, Reference, and the quarterback rating that he gave up was 143.6 in 2019. So he gave up a quarterback rating in coverage of 143.6, which is not good at all, and an 89% completion. A percentage when he was thrown against so that's those are some of the cons right there but i think he could fit and stop the run we were not good stopping the run last year we let guys like alfred morris from the giants have 50 yards in a game that's inexcusable um the lat the pay the uh, the, um, the game against the buccaneers in the playoffs leonard fournette went crazy and had 100 yards he had a field day so that is one of our weakness stop weaknesses stopping the run stopping the pass we were really good last year but stopping the run was definitely an achilles heel that's a that's a that's one of the things we had to improve. I think that's the weakness of our defense. It really is stopping the run. We really should be better at stopping the run. But this guy, where he could fit in, he could definitely be um, a strong side linebacker. But he's just not good in coverage, you know, running with tight ends, running with 
running backs out of the backfield. So that is one of the weaknesses. That is why the Dolphins cut this guy because he does have his pros, but he does have his cons. So he definitely could come in and help stop on the run. That, like I said, that's one of our weaknesses where we definitely have to improve. But he does not miss tackles. He's a heck of a tackler, heck of a run stopper, has good instincts as well. And he takes on blocks really, really well. So he's more of an old school linebacker. He's more of a first down linebacker and a third and one, fourth and one situational guy um, that we could definitely bring in. So we'll see if we go after this guy. I mean, there's interest in him. It's between us and the Jets. He was the third fastest player in franchise history with the Texans to reach 500 tackles. So the guy, he's a tackling machine. He's a tackling machine. He can he can get after it for sure. So, um, and he was in that 2018 year, he had five tackles for loss. In 2017, he had 10 tackles for loss as well. In 2016, he had eight tackles for loss. 2015, he had seven tackles for loss. So he can get after it. He can get in the backfield. He's a thumper. He's a hard hitter. And he definitely will get in the backfield. And, and he's really good at plugging and playing, finding the holes in the offensive line and getting after the running back. So he, he, he will be a good run stopper. But the only thing that concerns me is him in coverage. We've seen our linebackers get torched in coverage by tight ends, running backs, John Bostick last year as well. But Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis would help him out with the, with the speed. And, you know, we are supposed to be running that 5-2 set, you know, with Matt Ioannidis, Deron Payne, John Allen, Montez Sweat, and Chase Young. So he could be in that package as well with that 5-2 um, defensive package, which, would, which will be very, very interesting. Only has one interception in his career. So like I said, he's just not a guy that really is good in coverage. So that's the only concern for me. So I'm not really banging on the table to get him but in 2018 he had seven pass deflections that was his best year as a pro bowler and uh the completion percentage that he allowed in 2018 was 65 so if he can get back to that form and he only had a shoulder injury he didn't have a leg injury so that's good to see too um so i, I wouldn't mind bringing him in on, on a cheap deal you know we got bobby mccain from the dolphins brian fitzpatrick from the dolphins and eric flowers from the dolphins and this guy um bernard mckinney was technically on the Dolphins for a little bit. So we're not going to be the Washington Dolphins as much as the Washington Panthers. But um, I think he would be a solid pickup. I wouldn't be mad at it. We just need depth all the way around. We can get it. Last year, we were desperate and went after guys like Michael Kendricks, um, who was solid a little bit at, at the end of the year. But I wouldn't mind going after this guy, uh, Bernard McKinney. Um, so he looks like a solid run stopper. We need some guys that can stop the run. But we need guys who can guard um, running backs and tight ends and, and, and guys coming out the backfield for sure. So if, we, if we're if we looking for somebody to, to hang with, with guys in coverage, Bernard McKinney is not that guy. He's just not. But if, we were, if we're looking for somebody to stop the run, he certainly is that guy. So you guys let me know what you guys think. Is there anybody else, any other linebackers? I like Everson Griffin, the defensive end who was released from the Vikings to be a situational pass rusher to back up Montez Sweat and Chase Young. That's somebody who I really, really want us to go after on a one-year cheap deal. He could come in and have that role of Ryan Kerrigan from last year because we're not looking for Everson Griffin to come in and be a starter. We're just looking for him to come in and be a situational passer, give Montez Sweat, give Chase Young, give guys like that a break. That's what I'm really looking for. So if we can just bring Everson Griffin on that role, I would be a happy, happy guy. So let me know who else you guys are looking for off the waiver wire who got released. You can comment down below and I'll try to talk about them. We'll see. I'll be reacting to all the pickups that we make today and some of the guys that we place on the practice squad as well. All right, you guys, hell to the football team. And also, um, Will Greer, he was released. I know a lot of people connected him to us to bring in a practice squad quarterback. I think we will be bringing in a – well, Steven Montez is going to clear waivers, but I wish we would bring somebody else other than Steven Montez. But you can let Steven Montez develop on a practice squad. It is what it is. I'm not going to bash him too much. So, all right, you guys, hell to the football team. Peace.